The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Don't think that this nation is there for naught and that is your business is your own business. No, it is not. The relevance of the church, it is in her blessing to the nations. When politicians are doing equalization, we should tell them the truth. That stop doing these things. Don't destroy our nation for us. If you don't love the nation, why did you stand for the constituency leader? Let's tell them. Because when they destroy it, we will eat it. In her prosperity, you also prosper. Shall we bow down our heads for a moment? Begin to think about this. And say a prayer for Ghana. It's a prayer for Ghana. Say a sincere prayer. And if you are a type who love to curse the land, you spite the nation. I want you to repent of that one too. Amen. Can I please ask you to rise? And I want you to read this. Let's read Zachariah. Zachariah. Zechariah chapter 4. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You remember that in Jeremiah, he says, pray unto the Lord. He has the hearts of kings in his hands. Pray to Jehovah, the omnipotent. He can turn situations around. Sometimes when we see hopelessness, don't think that God cannot change situations around. He turns things around. He says that it's not going to be by might, nor by power, by, but by my spirit. Verse 7 is what I need. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you become level ground. All mountains, I pray in the name of Jesus. That is standing against the prosperity of the land. Let it become a level ground in Jesus' name. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of God bless it. God bless it. Now, just imagine Ghana. Just project that flag. And I want you to lift up your hands. Say, God bless Ghana. Ghana. Now, I want you to do that. Don't let me say what you want. Bless the nation. Bless it. Don't curse it. In a prosperity, you also prosper. In a prosperity, you will prosper. In a prosperity, you will prosper. I am the, 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 the. Let's pray peace upon the land. I want to put some pictures into your soul. That is why I'm doing all this. 
I pray a total change, a shift from cursing our land to blessing it. Zerubbabel went back home to go and build the temple. Challenges were there. And the Bible says that, what do you see, Zerubbabel? What do you see? What do you see? It's never going to be by might nor by power. It's going to be built by my spirit. He says that, and then begin to shout and bless the land. Say, God bless it. God bless it. The King James says that, peace be unto the land. Peace be unto the land. And then the angel said, Zerubbabel's hand has begun it. This same hand will complete it. Shall we please sit? Kayemo Satan. God bless our homeland, Ghana. And make our nation great and strong. God bless this land. Make our nation great and strong. Then he moved on to say that, I know the plans that I have for you. Not of evil, I don't want to harm you. But to bring you to an expected end, God has plans for every nation. When it was about 70 years, a boy who by this time is about 80 plus, Daniel, in Daniel chapter 9, was reading about Jeremiah. And reading Jeremiah, as you say, and then he realized that Jeremiah prophesied that the Ezra will span 70 years. And it was almost 70 years. And then he entered into prayer. And he started praying. His prayer was petitioning God that God forgive our fathers. Forgive the sins of our fathers. Daniel chapter 9. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9. Let's start from verse 1, we'll do. In the first year of Darius, son of Zazas, who was made ruler over Babylon, or the Babylonian kingdom. So we are still in Babylon, still in Ezra. Daniel was also part of the Ezra. And now he is praying that God will bring deliverance. In the first year, let's move to verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem will last 70 years. Verse 3. So I turn to the Lord. Do you remember that Jeremiah says that pray to the Lord for it? And pleaded with him in prayer and petition in fasting and in sackcloth and in ashes. I pray to the Lord my God and confess, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps the covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commands. The next verse. What is that word? The first one. First one. First one. But you see, I love Daniel. He's a humble man. He was not suffering in Babylon. He was made to even oversee the leaders of the various provinces in Babylon. He was a rich man, powerful in spirit, sharp in the mind, but he identified with his people who are suffering. If you are listening to me and watching me at home, don't think that because you live in a good suburb and you do a good job, When there's trouble in the land, you escape. No. We are all involved. That is a song our choir sang. We are all involved. He says, we have sinned and done wrong. See, when people are living the sin, especially politicians, if you have to wake Dr. Kwame Nkrumah up, he tell me, he said, please tell us what are some of your regrets He will tell you certain secret things that no Ghanaian knows. He will tell you certain things. Where they went for the Kankanyami. How he would just imprison his colleagues and refuse them bail and release. Some of them just died like that. He didn't stop with him. 
We have all seen how our former president were put on stake and killed. In the name of corruption, yet their country is still corrupt. So what was the use? Killing those people. If they were around, they could have offered good counsel. At least from the past, they could have given us some wisdom. The sin of the land. Just recently, three Ghanaian girls were killed. We found their remains. Somewhere. The parents were bleeding. Father, forgive the sin of the land. It is not just about the leaders. Even in churches, we hear occultic powers ruling and people posed to be pastors. But I've been hearing that they even bury things as foundations. The kind of wicked things that go on even in churches. Father, forgive us and save our land. 